Hi everyone, Manipa here, and uh, this is a section B of uh, this paper, uh, science paper two, which is our chemistry 2021 GCE. I go straight to the question business of the day, answer all questions, and we're really going to do that. Write your answers in the space here. Question one, laboratory safety rules and regulations are important to keep the laboratory safe. A, state the immediate action that a learner should take if the following happened while carrying out an experiment. These are first aid uh, moves. So uh, one, chemicals got into contact with her or his clothes or skin or mouth. You take off the clothes and wash the skin or mouth with plenty of water, copious amounts of water. Therefore, you wash off the chemicals to reduce the contact time. And then I wonder how the chemicals would end up into your mouth. Okay, so number two, she or he burned or cut herself or himself clean and disinfect okay here maybe i was supposed to say that uh, this contaminates okay i think uh, somehow disinfect the wound before leaving lab to prevent invasion and covering the wound therefore you clean just in case you cut yourself because after cutting yourself what else would have remained on the wound so you simply wash off before uh covering by covering this will simply prevent uh, uh further bleeding although this also depends with how big the wound is so you simply cover you clean you remove whatever uh could have removed meant there then you simply cover to prevent further exposure to anything else and then yes uh, prevention of bleeding so we'll get to the next question B the following diagram shows the Bunsen burner uh, the most commonly used heating apparatus in the chemistry laboratory there's our air hole right there give one reason why the air hole should be fully open when the Bunsen burner is in use to allow air or oxygen to enter the burner as it supports burning oxygen supports burning C one of the gases um, one one of the gases used in Bunsen burner is methane okay the smallest hydrocarbon state all products uh, state all products of combustion of this gas in the in the Bunsen burner when the hole is fully open therefore complete combustion therefore the products are carbon dioxide water and energy energy which is a form of light and heat okay and even sound um, and mechanical because air is simply made to rise and all that so number two one of the products of complete combustion of methane is a pollutant name the product and state its effect on the environment of course it's carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the pollutant and it's, it contributes to the greenhouse effect which in turn uh, contributes to global warming there are three main greenhouse gases which are methane uh, ammonia and carbon dioxide and the contribute to the greenhouse effect and global warming so that's our answer there we have the six marks we move apparatus there shows a separation technique used in separating miscible liquids um that's fraction distillation of course just by looking you can tell because there's this fractionating column and the like so what is the name of the of this separation technique fraction distillation Number B, what is the purpose of the glass beads in the fractionating column? The purpose is to cause the vapor of the liquid whose boiling point has not reached to be condensed. Therefore, the vapor whose BP has not been reached yet has to condense back. And only that vapor whose boiling point has been reached to have enough kinetic energy to pass through the beads and be condensed on the other end. Why? The, the other way of... Uh, of, of, of answering this is to separate the vapors therefore one condenses and one passes uh, number C why is the Libby condenser kept in a slanted position as in the figure slanted like this downward and not upwards like that so um, the answer can be expressed I would say almost in two ways which are almost the same I would say to maximize on the cooling effect therefore prevent the escape of vapor Okay, escape of vapor therefore maximizing cooling effect therefore when you check out when you check this out water flows opposite therefore this opposite flow um, is referred to as the counter current to the flow of vapor in the tube therefore this maximizes cooling and prevents the escape of vapor because if it was facing upwards like that vapor would easily go up like that <coughs> and our last question there is apart from the make from make from the mixture of miscible liquids name two other mixtures which can be separated using this separate uh, this separation technique i really have to scratch a little bit for me to answer this but finally i had an epiphany and uh, these were my answers and i believe they're correct one is crude oil and the other one is air both of these are complex solutions okay we'll get to the next question 
The question reads, two grams of pure magnesium ribbon reacted with exactly 100 cubic centimeters of two molar hydrochloric acid. This is two molar or two moles per decimeter. Uh, the first question is A, construct a, a balanced chemical equation for the reaction includes state symbols. Magnesium ribbon is solid, this one is aqueous, aqueous, then gas there. Therefore, hydrogen gas is liberated and then we have actually balanced our equation. Uh, determine the limiting reagent for the reaction. Um, limiting reagent are simply draw ratios here after balancing this from the balance equation the reacting ratios are simply one more to two moles the coefficient represents number of moles therefore magnesium to, chlor uh, to hydrogen chloride or to hydrochloric acid so I use the mass ratios and then I convert the mass ratios to moles then I compare the moles that are found to the moles in the question to check if the ratios are the same uh, when you check out here, the magnesium is 2 grams, and so that's 2 grams over 24, which is the molar mass of magnesium. Then I check out this. Um, from the balance equation, it's this, but from the question, the actual experiment, I have the volume and I have the concentration in moles per decimeter, so I can find the number of moles using this formula here. Our concentration is equals to N over V. This is actually N. I was almost going off track there, so... I did a little bit of rubbing so n over v number of moles over volume the volume has to be in decimeters so I divide by 1000 because one decimeter is equal to 1000 cubic centimeters so my final number of moles is 0 0.2 moles okay 0 0.2 moles and then I convert these moles to mass I use this formula number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass so the molar mass is 36.5 I get it from the molecule then uh, the mass comes out as 7.3. Therefore, in this 100 cubic centimeters, there's 7.3 grams of acid. So I get this 7.3 and divide by its molar mass to give me the actual um, number of moles in this uh, number of moles in this acid. When you check out these two, uh, this is 0 0.08. This is 0 0.2. This is two and a half times uh, bigger than this. Yeah, about that much. Two point two and a half times about that much. So when you check out here. Uh, this is just twice this much. Okay, this is more than twice this much. So our limiting reagent comes out as magnesium because there will be uh, there, there's a remainder of acid after these two react because this is more than twice this. Okay, it's supposed to be exactly two to one. But since this is more, then our limiting reagent becomes magnesium. Remember, the limiting reagent determines the amount of products to be formed. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm rushing there, rushing the, the flash. I hope I don't crash. So, um, magnesium becomes our limiting reagent, and it's the one we're going to involve in further calculations because it will be the one that will determine the amount of product to be formed. So, the next question, which you see, calculate the volume of gas that was evolved at RTP. And so, as I said, I actually went off road a little bit, but don't worry about these maps here. I managed to correct it before it went very far. So, I get back to my more ratios here. I use magnesium as my 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 limiting reagent to determine the amount of hydrogen that will be produced so in the balance equation you need one more of magnesium produces one more of gas which is in this question this equation one more of magnesium produces one more of gas this is the fixed ratio uh which that is why we have to balance the equation because it it creates a fixed ratio something we can compare to something we can relate to if we have to determine of what happens in the actual experiment well given these values like up there so in the equation, uh, one more produces one more of gas. Then in our experiment, our the moles of magnesium was 0 0.0833 moles. And then X should be that. So once I do my cross multiplication, since it's one to one, then the moles of gas will also be equal to the moles of the metal that was dissolved. Then I simply uh, move on to... To avogadro's uh, uh, you know low about uh, gases molar gases uh, at RTP one more of, mo of a molecular gas will occupy 24 liters or decimeter cubic therefore I do my cross multiplication therefore 0 0.0833 moles should occupy X when I do my cross multiplication it gives me two liters though so it's 1.999 should be three at the end but I just round it off to two decimeters so the amount of gas evolved is two decimeters or two liters seven marks is hours okay so we move I know I'm cruising but you can still download this video and since uh, as, and still go through I'm cruising like a rocket which is you know a space bound 
uh, rocket ship. So number B4 contains um, atomic mass units and percentage abundances for the element Q. These are isotopes of Q. Okay, and uh, abundances are simply the percentages uh, in which this, these are isotopes occur in nature. Uh, percentages in which I, these isotopes occur in nature expressed as a percentage natural in a, from a natural sample okay natural sample determine the relative atomic mass of q relative atomic mass i'm calculating for average isotope times its percentage uh, plus isotope times its percentage since there are only two of them i just create these two if there was another one out of said plus isotope so i replace the mass of this isotope then multiplied by this uh, its percentage therefore 107 times 52 plus 109 times 52 in brackets work out the brackets first then do your uh, your, your division by 100 or you can still divide by 100 in advance divide the percentages by 100 then do your addition my final mass is 0. Point, I mean 107.96 atomic mass units. But since they are looking for relative atomic mass, relative atomic mass has no units. Okay, this is just average atomic mass AV. But relative atomic mass AR has no units, so I just write it like that. 107.96. Number B, <coughs> excuse me. Describe a, a radioisotope. It is an isotope that is radioactive. Okay, uh, an isotope that is radioactive. State one use of carbon fourteen in carbon in radiocarbon dating. Okay, trying to you know dating the age of uh, organic fossil remains. Okay, number three. I mean number two. Iodine one thirty one isotope. What what could be one of the main uses of this isotope in the treatment and diagnosis of cancer of the thyroid? Okay, as you know, uh, iodine is used in the making of tyroxine, a major growth hormone, especially in younger children. Therefore, uh, it's used in the treatment of and diagnosis of cancer of the thyroid. We have five marks, I'm sure of that. We move. B5, fluorine gas is bubbled through a solution of potassium bromide as shown in the diagram below. We have got fluorine, potassium bromide, test tube bubbles there. Uh, A1, describe what would be observed in the test tube. Bromine would be liberated, thus solution turning orange, um, color of bromine. Therefore, the solution will turn orange because uh, fluorine is more reactive than bromine. It's the most reactive non-metal single element, okay? The most reactive single non-metal element. Therefore, to displace bromine from its compounds. Remember, uh, reactive metals are hard to displace from their compounds. Therefore, they form stable compounds. Less reactive elements can be easily displaced. So this is why this happens. Number two, balanced equation. Uh, we've got fluorine, a diatomic molecule, potassium bromide. Then finally, we've got potassium fluoride and bromine liquid. This is liquid here because bromine is a liquid. Next question, what would be observed in the test tube if iodine gas was bubbled through the, pot through, through the potassium bromide solution? Give a reason to your answer. When you look at iodine, it's below bromine in, on, in, the, in the group. Therefore, uh, bromine is actually more reactive than iodine. Among non-metals in a group, the higher you go in the group, or in the group, the more reactive the species become. Therefore, iodine is below uh, bromine, therefore it won't be able to displace bromine from its compounds. So, uh, as you can see, solution would remain unchanged, and then the reason is because iodine is less reactive than bromine. We have the five marks to us. So we move. B6. Describe the rate of a chemical reaction. This is the speed at which the reactants are being consumed in a chemical reaction. You can even say the rate at which products are being produced. Okay, therefore, uh, that is one way of defining it. B, state the reason for each of the following, I mean, state the reason for each observation below. One, hydrogen peroxide decomposes much faster in the presence of an enzyme catalase in the liver, that is. This is because the enzyme speeds up the rate of chemical of decomposition as a catalyst. Therefore, there is influence of a catalyst because enzymes are catalysts. Number two, uh, the reaction between manganese, carbonate, and dilute Hydrochloric acid speeds up when some concentrated hydrochloric acid is added. There's concentration there. The reason is because the more concentrated the reactants are, the higher the rate. Okay, uh, You can express yourself in whichever way, but don't change the meaning. Increasing the concentration of reactants increases the, ch uh, uh, the, the chances of collisions between reactant particles and thus increases the rate. Number three. 
Uh, powdered magnesium is used in fireworks rather than magnesium ribbon powder. There is an aspect of surface area. Smaller particles react faster due to large surface area than large particles. Thus, powdered magnesium will react very fast to give instant explosions or reactions that will last for milliseconds. Okay, so we're done with our seven marks. We move. You see a question that seems to be tough? Just laugh. And this question will actually be intimidated that it will become soft. Okay, there's nothing like um, it's tough. So number B, seven. During the extraction of zinc, the ore is first roasted in air as illustrated in the equation below. Give the common name for the ore in the equation, zinc blend. Number B, name the uh, substance which can be used to reduce zinc to zinc oxide, carbon, coal, or coke, as some, as some books will put it. Number C, suggest a reason why sulfur dioxide should not be allowed to escape into a, to the atmosphere. It's a pollutant. The, gas is a pol the guy is a pollutant if breathed or allowed to form acid rain. Number D, uh, state one use of zinc in the galvanizing of iron sheets, covering of iron sheets. But again, here, if you look harder, zinc is more reactive than iron. So why do they have to galvanize iron using zinc? The reason is simple. Zinc forms a layer of zinc oxide. Therefore, the moment it begins to react with atmospheric oxygen, it will form an, an insoluble layer which will prevent further corrosion of the metal. Therefore, there won't be any more harm done to the metal and so iron inside will remain intact so do not get confused if you check out zinc is more reactive iron is uh, less reactive but you're protecting a less reactive metal using a more reactive metal so we move Coming to our last question in section B of this paper, the structure displayed below is a polymer that was formed from a monomer Y, okay? Name the polymer, okay, the name here is, uh, my name here is polybute 2,3 ena, okay? You can call it poly uh, 2,3 butene, okay? Name the monomer um, Y, that is 2,3 butene or but 2,3 ena. Number two, construct the, uh, the, the displayed structure of monomer Y. That is our monomer. That is the reason why I had to, to express these locants because I was able to tell to say the double bond should have been or is actually between carbon, the two middle carbons. Okay, uh, you can tell from this structure here by looking to say that the double bond is or was between the two middle carbons. If it was between any of the first carbons, like carbon one and two, then the, the structure would have been different. That's why the polymer comes out like that. Number C, monomer Y was reacted with steam under suitable conditions um, and, and an organic compound Z was formed. To which homologous series does Z belong? Alkanos, also known as alcohols. Therefore, steam reforming uh, results into alkenes uh, being converted to uh, alcohols when reacted with steam. When the bonds are broken, when one bond is broken, um, a hydrogen will be added and an OH group is going to be added to this molecule. Finally, write the general formula for the homologous series stated in C1 alcohol. That's our formula CnH2n plus 1OH. That's the general formula for alcohols. This marks the end of section B for this paper 2021 uh, science 2, which is chemistry GCE. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye for now. And remember to subscribe and share to keep this thing going. Bye-bye for now.